Hello, everybody. Uh, this is May the, uh, what is it? May the 22nd. May the 22nd, Friday. Uh, good to have you in my house. Welcome. Amen. I come up uh, thinking about, kind of reminiscing about coming up as a kid it, back in the day when we didn't have uh, all this technology, when company would come. Uh, we might be planning stuff, going places, had big plans, and get to go with mom and daddy. But if company came, that overpowered, overruled every other plan that we had. I remember my dad saying, y'all get out. And of course, you met people. You met people at the door or out at the, uh, where we parked the cars. And he would yell, y'all get out and come on in. And so I kind of feel like that today. Uh, but I, I, I am I am longing for the day where I can actually do that physically, okay? And uh, so, hey, but it is good to have you today to come into my living room. Uh, I think Jack's in the kitchen cooking something. Maybe he'll cook me something while he's at it. Uh, and so, uh, but hey, uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking about how good it is to uh, among, among all the things that are negative today and all the, the fussing in the back and the forth, you know, with the, with the coronavirus and the, 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 the stay home and, and shut up about it and, and this kind of stuff, you know, I'm just thinking about how good God is to us, how good. Uh, I, I, I can only tell my personal thing, tell my personal stories better, and I, don't, I, won't, I won't spend my whole time doing that, but, but there's been a couple times when I took my health for granted and uh, you know it just I just everything just worked right and I was not sick and and I don't feel like I really I thought I did but I don't feel like I had the uh, compassion that I needed especially in my position as a minister <coughs> excuse me and so but God has a way of changing all of that and and he has and he does and so it'd be uh, it, it, it's good for us to understand what God's doing when things don't go so good. And no better place than in the word of the Lord. Uh, and I'll, I'll get into that in a moment. But but yeah, I thought that a couple times I thought this was it, you know, with my the cancer and uh, that I had in my body. Took uh, six uh, treatments, you know, of uh, chemo and uh, that wasn't fun. And uh, went through that, got through that. And then of course, then my heart issues that they say I still have. And, uh, but I'm just grateful to be here, to be a part of the great kingdom of God, the work of God, and the people of God. Uh, wonderful, wonderful people of God, amen, that we're associated with. And of course, our dream and our hope is that we can help somebody along the way. I, 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 I was looking at my old files. Of course, you know, we have our, you know, you know, our computers and all the stuff we store things in now, you know. And, but, but, you know, I still have a, a file of paper uh, notes and sermons and lessons that I've taught over the years. Frida's helped me with that, uh, stored stuff away. Back, she used to type stuff for me quite a bit. And I, I found a thought, uh, a sermon title. I had a dream, a tough hide, and a tender heart. And, of course, I just skimmed on it a little bit last night over it and looking at it. And I thought, you know what? We need every bit of that. We can't let anybody take our dream. Can't let the devil or anybody else steal our dream. Uh, but if you've got a dream, you better be tough. So I put a tough hide. The title says a whole lot, but I'll explain a little bit if I can share that with you just a little bit today. And But in the middle of being tough, you also have to have a tender heart, okay? In Genesis 37 and 18, uh, Genesis 37, 18, and speaking of Joseph and his brothers, he said, and when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And, and if you read that story in Genesis, you'll realize pretty quickly that they were jealous of him uh, and his dream. Joseph had dreams. And it is, uh, he, was a, he was a young guy, he was a teenager. And so he was smart and he was uh, loved by his father. And, uh, but he uh, still wasn't wise enough to really handle all of it. You know, some dreams you just keep to yourself because when you tell that dream, it might make the other person 
not feel so good about it. And his brothers were all older than he was. And here he is telling them a dream where he sees all of them bowing down to him. Now that this usually doesn't sit good, you know, with most folks. Uh, but, but they sold him out. And you know the story of Joseph, but we love that story. He's a type, theologians say he's a type of, of Christ. He kept a good spirit. You know, the Bible said he came to his own and his own received him not. That's what happened to Jesus. And so, you know, Joseph had every right to get a, a angry spirit or he had every right to be discouraged and every right to, uh, you know, to get a lawyer and sue and whatever you do, okay? But, but you know, somebody, uh, but what he, what he really did get though out of all this is what we have to get. He got experience. I remember, I remember my dad in my early days, I assisted dad for a while and he was getting on up there. I thought he was old, he really wasn't. He was just in his 60s. But I remember him preaching or teaching a thought. And of course you can see, we don't preach for an emotion. We don't preach for a response, but it's nice to see a response from the audience, from the congregation. And of course you could see it, people would clap, people would shout, people would weep. There would be, there would be an emotion as he shared the word in his own way. And I remember it was learning stages. Of course, I, by the way, I was still learning, okay? But, but during those early days, I really didn't have any experience. So I would take that very scripture or that very thought that he read and taught out of and how emotional people got. I said, wow, that's a good one. I'm going to do that. But I remember preaching around and I would take one of daddy's thoughts and I would preach the exact same thing, use the same word, same scripture. And obviously, basically nothing would happen. And so, but he had something behind it. He had that experience that we're going to talk about in just a moment that Joseph had when we look at how cruel his brothers were to him and all the things they did to him, sold him into slavery, uh, or he ended up in slavery. And, you know, what a horrible thing. And of course, what we do, we pray that we get around all of that and we get a, we don't have to go through all of that. But, but the truth is that God allows that because we do need firsthand experience. And so, uh, you know, uh, you, you, you can't, you can't be brave, uh, and courageous and you can't relate to people the, like we should if everything in your life is just wonderful. And, uh, you know, if, if, if nothing happens to you that gets things crossways in your life, then, then you know, you, 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 you're just not going to be very, you not, not have any strength to give people. You know, hosp people in hospital beds, you can pray for them and lay hands on them and God will heal them. I've done that, you know, all of my life just about it. Uh, but, but I didn't feel what they felt. I didn't know. It was just, it was just the mercy and the grace of God that let things happen. He did it for their sake until I got in that place. But you know, Margaret Thatcher said something one time. She said, you may have to fight a battle more than once to win it. And so I feel like I'm probably sharing this with people who's been battling uh, various things, whether it's health issues or maybe just uh, your finances. Uh, it, it may be a mental issue, okay? But you've just struggled with it. You've battled with it. Well, just, you know, Sometimes, you know, I, I used to preach against just hanging on uh, because I, I was a progress man. I was like, you know, let's get victory. But, you know, but sometimes the reality is that that's all we can do is just hold on. And that's me probably relating, you know, my personal feelings there because that's, I've been to that place a couple of times. So this is not a shouting message, but I think this will put something on your ribs. Okay, this, this will put something in there that'll carry you through some hard times. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, the, the, we're going somewhere. And of course the road we, we travel, you know, it, it may seem like, and this is another strong test for us. It seems like that it's going in the opposite direction from where our promised land is. That's, that's what happened in uh, the wilderness when they followed the cloud. That was a type of following the spirit and the fire. They, when it moved, they moved. They, they had an idea, they had a general idea of the direction that the promised land was in. This is, this is good and this is right and this is the right direction. However, uh, if you went around that mountain, 
for 40 years. Uh, they, it didn't take you know much up here to figure out like, hey, we're we're going the other way. The promised land is that way. But you just keep on doing what is right and what is good and what is proper. And uh, you, you keep the right spirit while you're doing that. In other words, keep your dream. I don't know when, uh, but I have a promise. And that, that sounds uh, silly. And that sounds like we're, um, you know, we're just kind of skipping over uh, the real problem sometimes. No, no, the real problem is right in here. It's not what happens to me. It's not who sells me out. It's not who treats me bad. It's, it's my response to all of that that God is really looking at because every person that God ever called, he put them through a series of ups and downs and back and forth and, you know, you name it, things did happen, all right? Uh, remember, Jesus said, blessed are the meek, now, that word meek is not a very popular word in America and probably not other places either. You know, meekness. Somebody defined meekness that studied that more than I do. In fact, I remember the first person I ever heard preach that was Gordon Mallory, and I've preached it so long that I've claimed it for myself now. Uh, but but blessed are the meek, you know, they, they, they'll inherit the earth, Jesus said. But, but the definition of that, one person told me, in fact, Gordon Mallory, he said, they are ones, the ones who claim no rights of their own. Now think about that a moment. You know, we all have rights. The court's system is full because you got two parties and each one feels like they have rights. So we get a lawyer, we pay him good money to come convince the judge or the jury that we're there. So there's battles, there's fights going on. But what are you gonna do with the guy what are you going to do with a person who claims no rights? You talk about shut down the argument, shut down the whole court system. They, they make their money. And by the way, you know, I think I was listening to somebody uh, on the news, you know, and they just mentioned the fact that lawyers are lining up. They're ready to take the cases of people who go to Walmart and go to Home Depot or your church, and they claim that they got the coronavirus at your church, okay? These are things that we're gonna have to deal with in the future. We better make sure we got insurance to cover things, to help us with this, because if God can't shut us down with the coronavirus forever, then uh, there's somebody that'll show up that we're trying to help and bless, okay? And blame us for getting sick. So, so but, but, but a person who claims no rights, of that's what Jesus said. They're the ones that are gonna inherit things, all okay? right? And so, um, you know, this, this is this is you know stuff that that we as Christians ought to. You know, right now we got people shaking their fists like we need to get our back to our churches and and you know this is our our right to do this. And y'all know the story you hear. And so I can lean over to that side and say, you know, that's right. You know, it's our constitutional right to go back to church and claim our rights. And now that may, that may be something that we'll, we'll, it's a popular thing nowadays. You know, we're not a dish rag, you know, we're not a doormat uh, for the government or anybody else. And I'm not, I'm not suggesting that we do that, but, but you don't, you don't have a fight with somebody that won't fight back. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I, I preach a message about a hill to die on, but the truth is there's a lot of hills uh, I used the military strategy, okay, how they would claim a hill and they would have that, that advantage of the view and the, and the oversight. They could see the enemy and whoever took that hill would win the battle. And I preached that and, and talked about it. But in Pentecost, and I can talk about Pentecost to, uh, because I'm, I'm one of them and, and, you know, died in the wool. I believe the message, uh, but, but I, you know, uh, you know, there's some hills that we, we don't, I'm not willing to die on because every issue is not a heaven or a hell issue. And, but I don't know, I came in and I certainly could have fell over into that category. Uh, you know, I, I can name all kinds of things that general Christians do not obey and pay no attention to. Uh, it may not be a sin of commission. It may be a sin of omission. Oh, we're just not going to worry about that. We don't think about that anymore. We blame the Baptist for doing that, but we do the same thing. But, but I, I'm not going to be judgmental and, mental and harsh toward people that way. It's not a hill to die on. We need to ask God and, 
uh, in earnest, Lord, w w which he'll, I mean, there's some things when it comes to it, I'm going to stand on it. I'm not moving. Okay, I'm going to preach this, teach this, and, uh, and you know, because, you know, we need to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Okay, that's, that's something that Christians ought to be. But, but we have to keep our dream, have to keep our dream going. Don't let anybody steal your dream. Joseph dreamed about it. But, but to make a long story not quite as long, Joseph went through all that he went through, and, of course, the dream came true. And, uh, you know, uh, you know there, there, I think about it a moment. <clears throat> there's, there's, been a, uh, uh, there's been a lot of us that suffered, and we can relate to this. And, uh, you, know, you know, if I do something wrong, I just get, you know, I get accused, and that's bad. I get caught. Okay, I get found out. Okay, but, but when you're falsely accused by others, you're, you suffer unjustly. That's, that's what happened to Joseph, and it's happened to many of us at times, okay? But, but the most incredible part of this whole story is, is not those lonely days and nights of suffering, uh, but Joseph's his unwavering love for his brethren. I, I had one of my uncles... One of my mom's brothers, I uh, asked about his brother, and, and I said, how's your brother? And he said, I don't have a brother. Well, he's older than me, and that's been several years ago. And I said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you got a brother. He, no, and I said, no, you can say that all you want. Now, <laughs> once, once in a while, you know, I, I, you know, I like to stand my ground. He just, in his mind, he didn't have it because they disagreed about something and kind of had a falling out, and he didn't have a brother. Well, Joseph could have done that. He had every right, I said it in the beginning, every right to be bitter, be angry with his brethren. But, but that's the, you know, he still loved his, watch Genesis 40, Genesis 45 and 5. He said, now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither for God did send me before you to preserve life. That's how... That's how Israel ended up in, that's how they got to Egypt and begin with, the land of Goshen, because they needed food, and Joseph could provide that and move them, them his family, which was probably about 70-something people, the historians and the theologians tell us. When they first got there, of course, they grew into millions by the time they marched out of there. Uh, Joseph was tough enough to keep on dreaming, but tender enough to forgive those who had done him great harm. Wow, what a, what a message. And that's not a run in the aisle, shouting, swing off the chandelier message, but, but that's a Christian message. That, that's the fore, foreshadowing of Jesus Christ and what he represented, the Christians of our day who supposed to be Christ-like. Loyalty uh, is, a, is a rare commodity today. It's just something that you don't see every day. Amen. People who are faithful to somebody who will stand with you. Amen. No matter what you do to me, you are still my brother. That's, what, that's how Joseph looked at it. But that's a reality. That's true. And, but he, he forgave him. He, he let him off the hook. I, I, wonder, I wonder how many of us, if we really, if we catch somebody at some, we find somebody out. Okay. You know, there's a scripture Paul wrote about. It. He said, let your moderation be known to all men. Now, you know, I, I, moderation is kind of in the middle. That's, the, that's like people who, who felt like dress codes. You know, the more, the more modest they got, uh, they would go to modesty and then go on beyond modesty, and they thought they were holier uh, than anybody else. And uh, it was not holiness. It was modesty. Now, ho holiness is a result, or modesty is, I believe, a result of holiness on the inside, a willingness to dress modest and, and appear before the world in a modest way. But, but we, that's why we have preachers and teachers to help us with that. But, but uh, you know, you, you can't look at, a, at the outside every time and tell exactly who or what that person is, all right, or what they're not. But, but Joseph, you know, uh, he preserved a nation through, through his godly spirit and his attitude and his approach to these things. He didn't allow these wrongs done to him. He didn't allow him to pull that, 
him in to that fight. Okay, he remember he said you know, he had no he was the meek meek one. He had no rights of his own. Psalms fifty one and ten, David said, "Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me." That, I believe that's why that God put that name on him or that title, the man after God's own heart. I, 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 I honestly believe that this is the way to our victories. Uh, and listen, I'm going to keep shouting. I'm going to keep bringing preachers in when this coronavirus uh, pandemic is ended and I'm going to have preachers. We're going to preach lively and we're going to expect people to have peace and joy and, and do all of this stuff. But 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 you have to get this in here first. This is the part that we're not shouting about, but my spirit has to be right. Uh, I have to continue my dream, all right? Uh, and, and, but while I'm at it, I'm going to have some tests that people's going to fire on me, okay? They go, you know, I've been accused of false doctrine and false teaching and you know, these kind of things. The other day I was, there was, and I wouldn't go on Facebook for years. Now, Frida had it, and so she stayed connected with people. And I would ask her once in a while, send them a message, tell us, tell them this, tell them we love them, uh, happy anniversary, whatever it was. But I just, I just wouldn't do it. Uh, but since we're uh, live streaming and it seemed good that we, uh, you know, get our own, uh, Facebook page, and, and of course we did that. And so once in a while, I'll have people, uh, you know, sending me stuff and comments about what we say and what we do on our church service on Sunday and on the little times we get together here. And so I was just skimming, and somebody, uh, you know, they said something, a, a, a church person or Christian, obviously. Uh, and uh, boy, I just stopped on it a little while, and I had so much to say to them. I had so much, they were so wrong and so far off. Uh, but I just looked at that a while and I'm like, nope, nope, I'm not doing that. Just moved right on. I could see myself being pulled into some kind of fuss or some kind of art. See, that was not a hill to even think about getting on or taking. Uh, I, I would probably be a loser uh, on that, big, you know. So there, you can pick your fights don't join in to just every little thing. I just feel like Joseph had that, that attitude and that approach in his thinking. I don't, you know, I could throw all of them in jail. I have the authority to do that. I, I've been doing this longer than they have. I've studied deeper and longer, and I have a lot of experience, so I could help them out. But you know what? I didn't feel like I could help them, and so I, I decided not to get pulled into that. And I do that every once in a while. So we have a choice, folks. Uh, we don't have to, uh, we don't have to, put our voice into a lot of things, all right? And so uh, so uh, I need a clean heart. I, I, and of course, this is how we're gonna get victory. Um, you know, no fire from heaven, uh, no fiery message. It was just a dream. It was a, it was a, a, a tough hide and it was a tender heart. You know, somebody said this, and before we close, I wanna say this. I know this has kind of been short today. But, but, but when people are false accuse you, uh, th this is the other side of the coin, if I can do this for us. Maybe somebody made some help here. Uh, you'll get into situations, and you know what, people that are disloyal and unfaithful, people who will walk away from you, 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 may, you may have had your hands on them, prayed them through to the Holy Ghost. You prayed for their sickness, and God answered and healed them. All kind of blessings you can see. But this is all part of it. People will take the heart right out of you. I've experienced that. I mean, they, they left me. You know, Paul said that. He said, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. And so, you know, every, everybody has to go through that if you amount to very much. But it's how you respond to that. But the rest of that story is someone taking the heart out of you. I mean, it's, it's like a death blow. It could be. But then if you'll just hang on and keep the faith, keep the tough hide, and especially keep the heart, the tender heart, okay, and you dream, you'll find somebody that'll come along and put the heart right back in. That's our hope and that's our dream. Ephesians 6 and 13, and I'll say this in closing, uh, and then we're gonna pray. Uh, Paul said, when you've done all, done everything you can do, that's how he's various, various versions of that. But when you've done all, he said, just stand. Just keep on standing. I, I, I just believe that that's part of it, and sometimes living for God is not the most exciting thing. There's times that it is. Things are happening, 
okay? And it's just exciting and we're going. But then there are times when uh, God is silent and, and uh, you know, you just have to wait on the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Uh, I wear the scripture out. Be not weary in well-doing. Just do the right thing. Don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season, that word season, we should hang on that just a little bit. There are seasons that revival takes place. There are seasons in our lives. Be not weary in well-doing, doing right. For in due season, you'll reap if you faint not, or if you don't stop or don't quit. Praise God. Amen. So again, uh, maybe, maybe our little sharing of our thoughts might help you a little bit, encourage you to keep on, don't give up, keep your dream. Uh, you know, God's going to help us. He promised that he would, lots of promises of God. And so when we pray, and maybe we just pray those promises, promise to never leave us, never forsake us. And so let's, let's lay claim to that. Let's say it. Let's, uh, let's speak. You know, remember, remember, um, Ezekiel, the dry bone situation. You remember, that's a principle in the scripture too. God said, you know, preach to them, speak to them, say things to those dry bones, okay? And you know the story that comes. So, you know, Jesus also said in the New Testament, you know, he said, say to the mountain. He didn't say, ask me and beg me to move the mountain. He said, no, no, you, you say to the mountain, tell the mountain. So if it's sickness, uh, if it's other issues in your life that's just on you and you, you say to that thing, whatever that might be, you speak to that and you speak it in the name of Jesus. God, thank you today, God, for your, your promises. Amen. You've got blessings on us already. You have protected us. You fulfill so many wonderful promises. We've experienced it, God. You filled us with your spirit just like you promised. You said you would never leave us, never forsake us. We claim that promise. When the enemy begins to tell us, God, that you're far away and you're distant and you're out of touch, we know that none of that's true, God. We just hang on to your word that's forever settled. Amen. We allow the spirit to touch us right now. In Jesus' name. God, again, God, we're, our spirit is moving in, Lord, with your spirit to every house, every home. Hallelujah. In every heart. In the name of Jesus, God. And we just, we just, Come against any spirit that's unlike you, any spirit of fear, spirit of unbelief, spirit of doubt, spirit of confusion, amen, the spirit of sickness, amen, all of these things, we come against it, amen, that your people could be blessed and encouraged and lifted up, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Put your hand upon every, everyone, God, in Jesus' name. We, we speak that in the name that's above every name, hallelujah, the num name that every tongue shall confess to and every knee shall bow to. Lord, that's our authority in the name of Jesus. God, you said whatever we do, amen, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And so we do that today. We claim our blessings. We claim our promises in Jesus' name. We expect it, God, in the name of the Lord. Everybody said amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Again, I love every one of you and we will see you uh, at least on Sunday. And if the weather permits, we will, uh, we'll be outside again. Amen. I think it was just really great. And when people see, and maybe have seen the, the, the tape of the video of the last week, they will see how distant we were and, uh, feel like it's a little more safe. So more of our people may show up. And again, that's still your choice. We're going to leave that to you, but it's dangerous to stay out of church and stay separated too long. Okay. I'm just saying that as a pastor, bishop, and so we're hoping that people will see that and say, you know what, it looks pretty safe. It's outside. And so even a place where you can drive your car, we have it set up where you can even drive your car, keep your family in that car, amen. But, but that would be a little closer to getting back to normal again. And we want to see you there. Just, just a little encouragement, all right? Uh, God bless you. I love you, amen. If you need us, call us and communicate with us.